All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we are covering the Salesforce security side of things, and we're not going to go too deep. Salesforce security is massive. I mean, we're talking roles, profiles, permission sets, org-wide defaults, Apex sharing, uh, sharing rules, sharing settings, everything that goes into that. And there's there's more than I just mentioned, but that's a huge conversation. There are a lot of issues that come up from a security standpoint. It's probably close to, if not the most important topic in the Salesforce space. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now, before we dive in, uh, please, as always, go ahead and click subscribe so you don't miss out on these. And please share this series with other people because this is extremely meaningful. Um, and once again, uh, the five day challenge, if you haven't tried that out, it's totally free, going to walk you through how to kickstart your Salesforce career. So make sure you don't miss on that also. Um, but without wasting too much of your time, uh, with my intro, let's go ahead and jump into, uh, Salesforce real world requirements related to basic security issues. All right, so hopping right past that, let's start with the next request, which is effectively asking for the ability to transfer records. And I'll pull this up for you. So would it be possible, this is an email from a real person. Again, these are all real emails um, from real clients. Would it be possible to get me access to move customer accounts between coaches? So coaches are a type of user. Um, it's a user role in the, in the company. So I would like to be able to move customer accounts from one coach to another coach, one user to another user. I can currently change the name on cases, but I can't change the name on accounts. And what they mean is the, the owner name. So the, the owner of the record, I can currently change the owner of cases, but I can't change the owner of accounts. Here's an example, they link to an account. If you can assist with that, that would be great. In the meantime, can you move this account from this user over to this user? So on the surface, this seems relatively simple, right? And this is where a lot of admins get into trouble because they go, oh yeah, okay, can I give you access to transfer accounts? Yeah, that's probably uh, maybe in the org-wide defaults, depending on where you are. It might be in your profile. It might be um, somewhere I need to assign it in the permission set and just give you access to transfer those records. But here's what we need to think through. We have to know our user, first of all. Are they someone that is allowed to make this request. Is there a reason that they're allowed to transfer cases, but they're not allowed to transfer accounts? Maybe that was a problem previously, is that people who shouldn't be transferring accounts are doing it. So we need to think about, should this person even be allowed to do that? So who can give us approval? Because a lot of times administrators have the ability to do things, that doesn't mean they should do things. And that's where we get into a lot of trouble with over executing just because you know how to do something. So get approval, whether it's your manager, maybe it's the manager of the user who's making the request. And then if you find out they shouldn't be making that request, you can go to their manager and say, hey, you know, they're asking for things that they really shouldn't have. Can you have them talk to you first before they come to me? And that's a great way to uh, make sure that you're being uh, more proactive with being more efficient at work and making sure you're not getting requests that you shouldn't have. Now, once you have approval, it's effectively going to be somewhere inside the profile, a permission set or a sharing setting, uh, depending on where uh, you have that set up in your org and sort of how your org is defined. And again, we're not deep diving into solving these problems. We're giving you ideas of how to think through these issues and giving you a nod of where to look because every org is totally different. And this is more to make you understand those things you're learning in Trailhead, they really do come in handy in the real world. Um, and you really are gonna get requests, but the requests are gonna look like this. It's not going to say, you know, all Salesforce verbiage, all perfectly worded. It's going to be worded something like this. And then you're going to have to remember the things you learned on Trailhead, like profiles, permission sets, and sharing rules to determine where to go to make these updates. So it's not all handed to you. All right. So changing user profiles. So here's another actual request. So the subject says, please change this user's profile and access to this other profile. And the body of the email just says, thanks. Uh, so once again, this is a simple profile change, right? They actually told us exactly who the user is and exactly what profile they should have. So going back, knowing our user, verifying the request and getting approval. So we're just pointing back to this again. This is something Trailhead's never gonna teach you. It's not gonna tell you 
to be aware of your users. Those are things you're going to have to know. It's not going to tell you to go get approval from the right people. Those are things you're going to have to learn and know. So changing someone's profile, no problem at all. And also know that if they're asking you to switch someone from one access to another, they're probably changing roles inside the company. So it may be more than just profile. You can't trust that person to know exactly what needs to be done. They may need to be giving access, given access to other uh, third-party applications. They mean, may need to be given access to third-party tools like Pardot. Um, they might need to have a role update as well, maybe additional permission sets given or removed. So you have to keep in mind what all of the ancillary updates are that are needed. This is just the request. Your job as the Salesforce professional is to hear the request, understand it, and take the action that's needed, not just do exactly what you're asked to do. All right. So moving down, list view access. So here's a request. Uh, hey, Brad and another person on the team, can you give this user access to the sales admin cases view, please? So once again, uh, sales admin cases is just a list view on the case object and they need to have access. So typically you can just go into the, uh, find that list view for yourself as an admin and then go into the sharing settings on that list view and make sure that person has access. But let's take a look here. So once again, know your user, verify the request, get approval. Outside of that, it's gonna be list view sharing. But what you might find when you go into the list view sharing is that it's not shared to individual users. It's actually shared to a public group or an entire role. And what you'll typically find is that in those cases, it's actually an update that needs to happen on the user not on the list view, and you need to go to your user and make sure they're in the right role or make sure that they've been added to all of the public groups that are supposed to be part of that role. Now, in an off, off case, it might just be that you need to share that with that individual user on the list view, but typically it has something to do with the user setup and getting them into the right queues or public groups or into the right role. Now, here's a field level security item. So this person says, I am no longer able to edit the VPU last contact date on an account. So I'm gonna stop right there real quick. So all we're reading as, an, as a professional in the Salesforce space is the VPU last contact date appears to be a field and a customer account is just an account. So I'm trying to update a field on the account object. I need to be able to edit this date on customer accounts. How can I fix this issue? Please help. I appreciate your time and helping me and your guidance and helping to resolve the issue. Thank you. So a few key things we need to pick up on here. I am no longer able to. So again, we have to trust our users. You know, we have to know whether or not we can trust our users. And this wording makes me assume that at one point they were able to update the state, but now they're not able to anymore. So that's an assumption we shouldn't necessarily make. What we have to assume is that here's the bottom line. They can't update this field on a customer account. So what I would do, first of all, is log in as that user. And I would go verify that they actually cannot update that field. Okay. Once we confirm that, all right, they can't update it for whatever reason. All right. Confirmed. They do have this issue. Now, is it actually an issue or should they have access to update that field? And that's more of an administrative. You have to know the business sort of scenario. So it's, all right, what does this field do? Who uses this field? Is it really okay for the person making this request to update that field? If you don't see an issue there, then it becomes, okay, well, how do we give them access? It's a field level security question. So it's, you could go to the field, you could go to the actual object and the object manager, click on the fields, click edit and give them access there. Alternatively, you could go to the, the profile that user has um, and give them access from that direction. Um, or you could go, if it's specific to a permission set, you could give it in that way. And that's all about, does the entire profile need access or is it just this specific user or maybe just specifically people with this permission set? And that gets into, you know, security and making sure you're building, uh, building scalable security models in Salesforce. So let's look at the notes here. Once again, same stuff, get approval, make sure that everyone is on board with this decision. I know that can get old. I get it but you're running a business here, okay? And there's there's real business owners, there's real revenue, there's real employees here at this company. 
and you need to make sure that you're doing the right thing by the company. Uh, you don't always have to get approval. Like you'll eventually get comfortable with what needs approval, what doesn't, what can you do on your own. Uh, but until you get there, just err on the side of getting approval. So verify that you're looking at the right field. You can ask them for screenshots or maybe hop on a screen share with them if you need to troubleshoot further. And then once you identify that, okay, something really did change, like let's say they're right and something really did change and their access was taken away. Well, it's best to remediate that and figure out, you know, not for the purpose of pointing fingers or blaming someone, but basically just going back and saying, why did that change? Like, did someone else make a request that other people shouldn't be able to do that? Did, did other things change? Was this the only thing that got updated or were there other security items that were updated that we might want to take a second glance at as well? So this should all cue you to say, hmm, if this is wrong, what else might be wrong? And if we really did take away access, what else did we maybe take away access to? And let's rethink how we've done that and make sure that when we're fielding requests and, and doing things, that we think about it as an entire company and the downstream impact. So those are the biggest things. Um, and this is just giving you a, a quick intro to Salesforce security. There is so much more to security, but as you can see, we can run you know, 10 or 15 minutes into a video on a few quick topics and we can do so much more here. So be sure to leave a comment and let me know you know, other topics you want to see, other scenarios you want to see, and I'll try to dig some of those up for future videos. Um, and I'll find some emails where those kind of things have been asked for and we can walk through it. So be sure to subscribe, be sure to share this video uh, and the entire real world series with other people uh, so that they can learn about what really happens in the real world. Um, and of course, try out the five day challenge, give the video a like that really helps spread uh, this video and it, and it sort of tells YouTube, hey, share this with other people. If if people are liking it, subscribing it and commenting on it, then let's share that with other people. Also, let me know what you thought about these requests. Um, how would you solve them? What are some other things we should be thinking about when we're solving these types of problems? I would love to hear feedback from some of you seasoned professionals, as well as additional questions from individuals who are trying to get a better understanding of what happens in the Salesforce space. So thanks everybody for watching and keep an eye out for the next video in the series.